set. What's going on you guys, it's Keenan Briggs, athlete, coach, and mentor. And today we're gonna to talk about injury prevention. How to stay in shape all season. Now if you've been watching the past few weeks, we talked about the mental state of an athlete and just being pretty much self-confident in, your, in yourself and what you're able to do. Also, being and looking the part, as in wearing the correct attire, and etc. Now when it comes to injury prevention, there's a lot of things you gotta do outside of track and field to make sure you're prepared. For example, if you're not eating healthy, your body won't be able to perform how it's supposed to. So when you have a difficult practice and you're not properly nourished, your body's going to falter somewhere. And hopefully it's not a huge enough falter that can injure you to where you're going to be out for a few weeks. Another huge aspect is understanding your training calendar. If you expect to just show up to track and start running and jumping the first day you show up, it's not going to help. Because if you're not in the correct shape to run or practice the way you're trying to practice, you're going to end up getting hurt. Typically, if you start sprinting too early, too soon, you're going to have quad issues, hamstring issues, you're going to have shin splints that may pop up sooner. All these things kind of come into play when you're not in shape. Understand that if you have any time to just devote to getting in basic shape before you get into your training, you want to start doing that so you're properly prepared, just like studying for a test. Another way to prepare you is just making sure your workouts are progressive. If you're a jumper, don't just start jumping. You first want to start with body movement, build your strength up, lunges, things like that that are all on ground that can help you get stronger. Then you want to go from on ground training to maybe jump training, not as in horizontal, just leaving the ground vertically, letting your legs push and load and etc. so your body gets used to that. And then you want to get into your progressive bounding, then get on the runway. This may take six to eight weeks. Now you can rush that, but every time you rush something, you're actually putting your body in a position to be vulnerable for injury. It's very important that you work your feet into shape. Get accommodated to the new surface. So now your feet need to go from basketball shoes or from football cleats to running shoes. They feel different. Now when your feet are healthy and recovered and ready to go, then you're able to move on. So I would suggest if you're starting with bounding and jumping, you want to start with jumping and bounding on a turf surface or a softer surface such as grass or dirt. Then you can move into running flats on the runway. Then you work your way into spikes on the runway. The more time you're on the runway with spikes, the higher levels of impact you're going to have, which eventually lead into fatigue and soreness, and you take longer to recover, which is not good. And by the time you're actually ready to break down and you can't do anymore, is when you need your body the most. The last thing is take care of your body like it's not yours. Make sure you're feeding it correctly, make sure you're stretching it out, make sure you're icing it, because you don't want to give a good body that you received back in any type of worse condition. You want your body to get stronger, more explosive, and faster towards the end of season. Take care of your body as if it's already hurt. Ice every day before you even start having shin splints. Stretch every day. Give yourself 10 to 15 minutes after every practice to stretch. If you have to leave early, then leave practice early to stretch 10 to 15 minutes every single time. Till next time. Remember to click that subscribe button. I have new videos coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. For very detailed and exclusive information, make sure you visit KeenanBriggs.com.